E3 2019 will be great for Nintendo regardless if they have new game announcements. But if you missed our take on a possible new Mario or Nintendo Kart reveal, then check out part one of our Nintendo Switch in 2019 three-part miniseries. What I want to know is, is this E3 we're finally going to freaking see Metroid Prime 4? Oh my god. <laughs> so, I honestly thought we were going to see it at the Game Awards. I really did. I don't Me mind. Too. I'm not complaining. Same. I mean, getting Joker was amazing, but I did somewhat mm -hmm. expect that at the Game Awards. Um, I... I think it'll be a big blowout at E3 next year in terms of Metroid Prime, but I actually think, well, I don't want to make this prediction yet. I, well, I'm not going to do it. Why not? You know what? I'm going to do it. Do it. I Just think, do it, coward. I think we're going to see <laughs> the first teaser of Metroid Prime 4's gameplay during the January Direct. You think so? Yeah, mm, I, I would love that. I do. <laughs> that's crazy. If that if that's the case, that's that's crazy, and that will send a. That direct to Legendary. Well, because we already we already <laughs> know about so many 2019 games that I'm sure will be at E3. Things like the Ouija's Mansion 3, things like Animal Crossing, Bayonetta 3. There are a lot of games that we already know about. And I think a big thing about those January directs is they usually throw in about one or two really huge surprises. Uh, this mm -hmm. year, they did World Ends With You. Nobody thought we were going to get a remake of that game, really let alone no. on Switch. Um, along with that da Damon X Machina stuff. And uh, I do think we're going to see something along those lines in the January Direct. Um, something that really appeals to the hardcore. And that could be something like Bayonetta 3. But I think uh, a Metroid Prime sort of teaser makes a lot more sense there. With then an announcement that mm -hmm. we'll get a lot more information at this year's E3. Get the first teaser trailer, reveal of Samus, and then gameplay premiere at uh, E3 2019. Luigi's Mansion 3 seems like a game they're going to release around Halloween. Like, I feel yes. like, why would they release it any other time of the year? They got to do that in October. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so I think even if we see stuff for that game prior to E3, I think that's going to be one of their big E3 showcase titles this year. Um, I don't really think we're going to get a big blowout of that in well. January. And then Animal Crossing, as much as I would love to get that game in spring, I feel like that's going to be a fall release. I think, I think Animal so Crossing, Pokemon, and, uh, and Luigi would be a huge trio of games for the holidays. It would be so awesome. It'd be I, very incredible. I could see Animal Crossing actually as an August game. Uh, typical in the, in the holidays and people actually have time to play Animal Crossing and get invested into into the franchise. It, it's, it's, pre, it's pretty much a perfect summer it game. It is. That's, I really like it in the summer, but like August I feel like would be the perfect line between fall and because, um, and you know, it's <laughs> it's August. But, but also, I kind of want to bring this t a little back to Metroid Prime 4 because it's like, if they do ever reveal it in January, would that mean that the game would have to come out in 2019? Because I feel like at this point, this is a 2020 game, because, as, because man, they haven't shown any of it last year, or this year, rather, <laughs> 2018, and that kind it's of... It's pretty much Zelda Breath of the Wild all over yeah, again. Yeah, Zelda Breath of the Wild over again. It's kind of annoying, right? When, did, so, when did Metroid Prime 3 come out on Wii? Because wasn't that uh, like a February game? It was, it was an August 2007 game. August 2007. Okay, because I don't know why I was thinking that it was a March... Oh, it, what? No! Come to think of it, it was a March release. It was March 6th in Japan. They did a Japanese oh, release. So I could see them potentially doing the same thing with Metroid Prime 4. Uh, I agree with you. I think it's still really early in development. But if they really buckle down and want that game out next year, I could see a North American, European, Australian release of that in like October, November, and then sort of repeating what happened with Metroid Prime 3 and having a big spring release for it in 2020 in Japan. I f yeah, because it's like the people that want this game the most are the English speaking crowd, so. I, I think that's the, the most pos possible option here as well. And uh, in terms of uh, Metroid, we all know that it's the Australian, uh, European and US uh, Canada markets that are the most important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still have a little bit of feeling that that game is not far enough into development because I think that game is incredibly ambitious and they truly want to um, elevate the Metroid to the next level. So that one, it will sell, and mm -hmm. two, it will be able to compete even if we got the next Halo game next year. Exactly. It was, don't release this game next to Halo. What are you doing if you do that? Like, Nintendo that mistake in, twice. Nintendo's in a really weird position, though, next year because mm -hmm. I cannot remember a year in which we had so many big Nintendo games coming that we already knew about 
um, going into the year. I think a lot of the time mm -hmm. going into E3, we know about a lot of these big titles, but going into next year, we already know about Pokemon, Metroid, Bayonetta, Smash DLC, Luigi's Mansion, Animal Crossing. We already know about all of those, and we assume that yes. Fire Emblem and Yoshi will be before that. So the question to me is that, are we actually going to get a really big first party game that we don't already know about shown off at E3 as a holiday title? Because there have been rumblings of another Zelda coming out, either within the Breath of the Wild engine or 2D, mm -hmm. and I can kind of see that happening now, which is kind of weird because I feel like they don't really need <laughs> it. Like, you know, hold that off until 2020, but if they wanted to do it, they could just go, hey, you know what? Here's a new Zelda game, or, you know, here's the Mario Maker that people have been waiting for, or here's mm -hmm. maybe a real Mario Kart. Like, anything is possible at yeah. this point. The thing about uh, the Zelda game is that, one, I think they really want to make it uh, as good as it can, as it can be. And uh, ex with the exception of Majora's Mask, the Zelda team, they, they don't rush games. And what I would say about the possibility of a Zelda game next year, if there will be one, uh, most likely a remake, maybe a Skyward Sword HD, and then obviously I have a reveal of the next Zelda game that is coming out in 2020 at E3. Because Zelda games need to be uh, revealed at least one year ahead of the launch of the game. Mm -hmm. Especially at this point, we don't want another Breath of the Wild scenario on our hands again. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I do think we sort of forgot about the Skyward Sword thing. And, you know, with Aonuma's comments during that concert saying, oh, is that something you guys are interested in? I think he is sort of teasing fans. Um, so I do somewhat expect to see a Skyward Sword remake on Switch, uh, more like in the vein of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker than an actual full-on remake. Um, kind of like Ocarina of Time or Majora's yeah. Mask. I think it'll be more like a Wind Waker HD. Yeah, like a, a Zelda right, HD right, right, collection right, right. with uh, Wind Waker but HD, Twilight Prince HD. And if we get Earth that, Wild. that to me feels like a March title. That doesn't really feel like a second half of the year thing. That feels like a first half of the year thing. Well, Twilight Prince HD came out in like February. March. But, or yeah. March. But Wind Waker HD came out in, in the fall around the same time as A Link Between Worlds was coming out I'm gonna say something kind of controversial. I think the reason do that it. game came out in fall is due to the fact that Wii U had no games and they realized they need to actually Bingo. push something to be in that slot because based on what we saw during that January Direct of Wind Waker, oh, no, no, it no, looks no, pretty no. good. No, 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 we had Super Mario 3D World coming. But that was well, that literally was in... one game. They had, like an, they had a Mario <laughs> game and I think they needed something else for that holiday season because they had announced that during that January Direct, if you remember. They had originally mm -hmm. announced Wind Waker HD in January, and I think it was very possible that they could have That's released true. that in, you know, late spring, maybe around like the May area, but they purposely decided to wait until later on in the year so they have something else to sort of fill out that holiday season. Exactly. I agree with you, Roger. That was, yeah. And Wind Waker HD was also an easy project from what I heard. It only, I think I heard it took like, what, six months to do? <laughs> so in this regard, could we see... Skyward Sword HD in the January Direct, or a March would, Direct. Yeah, that would be a perfect place to announce a, an HD remake of a Zelda game. January Direct, you release it in spring prior to when E3 even happens, and then you get that teaser of that and 20... Exactly, Zelda, yeah. exactly. See, Conrad? Mm -hmm. You know you know about it. <laughs> you find, a, you find common the ground somewhere. There you go, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Made too many Zelda exactly. videos at this point to know how the game goes with, with all of this, but... Uh, if, if it's a Zelda game for 2020, they are reusing the assets from uh, Breath of the Wild engine, obviously. The only thing that they might change is the setting, uh, because um, obviously they could also have Hyrule, but before, with, well, not post-apocalyptic, and that would be something that many people would welcome, uh, and with uh, new objectives and so on. But the feeling of exploring the land will be gone, so they probably have to move it to yeah, a different I agree. place. I agree with that. I think this will be a Majora's Mask-esque kind of situation though where they just took the game engine all the properties of breath of the mm -hmm. wild the things like the destructible weapons and all the stuff that we got in that game and they just basically make a new game like they remix some type of breath of the wild i, I don't mean remix as in there they're going to reuse the characters like what majora's Mask did uh they took like a lot of npcs from ocarina of time and just gave them names and sort of changed them a little bit i don't think it's going to be that type of situation but i do think it's something where they're just going to take the actual engine, and they've put so much work into that engine too, that it seems like a waste to just throw it oh. away after one game. So I do feel like if we do get a mainline Zelda game that is a 3D Zelda game, it will be in that Breath of the Wild engine. But I'm still not mm -hmm. writing off the possibility 
that we get a 2D Zelda. Because what has that team been up to since Link Between Worlds? Nothing, right? Exactly. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. And I think uh, that that's a perfect analogy because we got Pokemon Let's Go, which is a top-down uh, Pokemon game, which and we saw how well that worked. And I think uh, top-down Zelda in HD would work just as well. And uh, I think I wouldn't be surprised if that could actually be a full game. What was the developer behind Samus Returns? Do you guys remember? It was Mercury Steam. Steam I love Samus Returns was a huge surprise for me last year because I was never, I love Metroid. That's like honestly one of my top three favorite franchises of all time. I love also it. Also same. But I hated <laughs> Metroid Two when I first played it. I thought that game was garbage. I like did mm -hmm. not like the zoomed in camera. And you know when they announced yeah. Samus Returns at E3 during that treehouse, I sort of thought, oh, they're leaving this game to die, right? They're just sort of hiding it in the treehouse because maybe they don't entirely believe in the developer behind it but now they have proven themselves i would argue samus returns is one of the top five best metroid games of all time Me and too. i truly believe if they want to hand over the 2d reigns for that franchise to that studio they could really do a great job with like a metroid 5 some type of continuation of fusion storyline whereas mm -hmm. metroid prime 4 takes place after corruption I, I think that'd be fantastic and so i'm totally down for the 2d and 3d versions of both of these franchises, like getting 2D and 3D Zeldas, 2D and 3D Metroids, that'd be great. Yeah, I, 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 I feel that it would be perfect. And uh, I think also a top-down Zelda could actually follow the timeline uh, in a sense. Maybe, like, if Greza made that game, because um, imagine if uh, Greza makes that, um, that top-down Zelda game, and then they just continue the story of the Hero of Time, people would go wild for it. Do you imagine if they had another Hero of Time game? People would go insane. Oh, it's so good. And it would be so perfect with the 20th anniversary we had uh, just um, uh, a month ago. And uh, it's just it's just too perfect. Mm -hmm. It really is. I Actually, love that so much. I just thought about something. I thought about Do something. It. I'm going to make another weird prediction. Oh, can't wait. I think Mercury Steam which is a company that worked on Samus Returns. Prior to Samus Returns, they did Castlevania Lord of Shadows. Yes. We have Castlevania characters in Smash Brothers, and Konami seems gung-ho on sort of rebranding that franchise now. We had the Netflix show, we now have the characters in Smash Brothers, Konami has been openly embracing the fans. Maybe so Mercury Steam is gonna make, yeah, sort of like a reboot of Castlevania, and they'll throw that on Switch. Especially, oh my god, with the anime on Netflix. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They tie it in with the story of the Netflix show. Oh, that would be That'd incredible. Be that, like, that, that show is amazing. I think people it would is. really like that. Mm, oh, oh, like oh, oh that, that's, an, that's an awesome prediction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I think that sums up pretty much um, E3. Uh, fall yeah. will uh, pretty much uh, probably start with Animal Crossing Switch. Mm hmm. I, have, I hope. That'd be um, awesome. I'd, I'd love Animal Crossing. We all know how much that sold on the 3DS. Right. Good lord. <laughs> it's good. I wouldn't surprise me if this is the best selling Animal Crossing game uh, in the long run. I mean, how much did City Folk even sell? I don't know. But um, I remember City Folk kind of not being that great. But it still sold a lot. <laughs> it sold a lot. Yeah. That's for sure. But you know, Switch is breaking sales records. And and then yeah, you got Animal Crossing, one of their best sellers ever. So it's going to be. I wish I could predict like what this game would be. But it's we don't know like anything about it other than it's an Animal Crossing game from the Switch. Maybe it'll be the president of the United States. Who knows? And that is one of the interesting things about Animal Crossing. I think people sort of sleep on it in terms of how big of a deal it is for Nintendo. Uh, yes. Ever since Wild World, those games have sold gangbusters. That is one of their best-selling franchises of all time. And New Leaf was such a massive success and went on to have such long legs. I mean, you gotta remember, three years later, no, four years technically, four years later, they released Welcome Amiibo, which was a re-release of New Leaf, and that sold yeah. a ton. Like, to me, Animal Crossing is one of those games, sort of like Smash Brothers, that people have been waiting for so long that there is just this overwhelming thirst and desire for that game that transcends even the hardcore Nintendo fan. You see people like Chrissy Teigen t talking about like, yes. when is Animal Crossing coming to Switch? That's something that I think has the potential to go as mainstream as something like Smash Brothers or something like uh, Mario Odyssey, where, you know, again, New Leaf reached out to that mainstream casual audience, but I think 
with this being on a console and being handheld, it's going to reach an entirely new audience this time too. And this oh, is yeah. one thing we don't, uh, uh, we can't forget about the Nintendo Switch in 2019. It's the year where they are bringing all those big handheld franchises over back and back to console, beginning Correct. with uh, Fire Emblem, then Animal Crossing, and then Pokemon. I mean, it's it's going to be Fire a crazy Emblem, year. Like you said. It's a big three. It's it's the end for the 3DS, pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we say that every year, and then to him, yeah, but this year it's game. happening. Like every you damn franchise, you said that the that's year before. That's sold on that console <laughs> is being moved back. Even Luigi's Mansion, technically. Well, we're gonna keep getting 3D remakes on the on the 3DS. Yeah, I think 3 3DS is still gonna get their Mario and Luigi remakes, and you're gonna get small stuff. I actually don't think 3DS will be dead by the end of next year. I still Me feel either. like they're gonna be releasing small stuff on there, just because that is the you know the the system for kiddies. You know, it's like if you have a kid and you don't want them to drop this expensive piece of hardware, well, here, give them a 2DS. There's hundreds and hundreds of great games on that system, and it's like, what, 60 bucks, 70 bucks for a yes. 2DS now? And you get a game with it? They're only going to continue to do that going into next year. I, I wouldn't be surprised if holiday 2019, we get a bundle with, like, the Mario & Luigi game that comes out in spring, and then that ends up, you know, releasing for 60 bucks or whatever, even exactly. though it's been out for so long. Yeah, for real. I, yeah. We're not, obviously, we're not going to be seeing that much software come out for it. But when you but when you have people just getting a 3DS for like Christmas or birthday or something, they they have all these games to choose from that are already out. It's insane. And the other thing next year too is that if they do choose to go down that route, then maybe we're not going to get this. But if they don't, I still feel like we haven't talked about this yet. That classic line is doing so well. It's still selling gangbusters, the NES classic and the Super Nintendo classic. It's like one of the, it was one of the most purchased things this Black Friday or something. It was on a bunch of different lists. I was reading and kind of shocked by it. Um, I think like we're going to get another classic line thing next year, whether that's N64 so. classic or I think still Game Boy. I think a Game Boy classic with Pokemon and Tetris would be huge. My yeah. only issue with that is that would they release a Game Boy classic the year of a new mainline Pokemon? Because I think that mainstream demographic that got back into it with Let's Go might just want to relive their childhood and get a Game Boy Classic with the old Pokemon games that they could trade with each other. Um, so maybe they'll end up doing N64 next year. I don't know, but I think we're going to get a classic line thing. I hope so. Um, but uh, you did hear recently that they're no longer manufacturing SNES and NES classics? Yes. Yeah, now they're officially okay, cool, done with cool. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. It's just like, I didn't even get an NES classic, but you know what? The Super NES classic is good enough for me. But even then, it's like, um, I really hope they do continue the classic line with, like you said, the Game Boy or N64 classic. They did say that the Nintendo 64 classic is not in the works, but you know... PR speak you can't always believe that so there's that but I, I they did say from the get-go that was gonna be a limited time thing they said with both of those it's gonna be a limited time thing and then they just made more of them because there was such a demand for it they sold like yeah, exactly. 1.5 million or something in 2016's holiday season and they were like oh, let's keep going <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's it's free money and I think if they do keep up that thing where they say okay we're discontinuing this but we're gonna make this new one that again actually is something that uh, you can only get for a limited amount of time, uh, we're looking at some type of classic release. Stuff like that. But you want to talk more about um, what's next on the list? Town, right? Town, I think it is. Yeah. I mean, Luigi's Mansion 3 was kind of next, but... But the, there's yeah. not much more to say. It's, it's coming out around Halloween, late October. We all agree on that, right? It's definitely going to be a Halloween game. Mm -hmm. oh, Luigi's Mansion oh, 3, completely. Halloween game guaranteed and we're gonna have a lot of fun that month it's gonna be a spooktacular commonwealth realm month <laughs> and it's gonna be great we'll probably do a probably do a little game versus games here and there what cool. do you think conrad yeah we could definitely do it with um luigi's mansion yes i agree so oh, that's games gonna be exciting I wonder what new mechanics they'll introduce but that's just something we'll have to wait for we'll happily wait for it patiently but how long mm -hmm. has it been since the last Luigi's Mansion game? Did it come out in like 2012, 2013? Dark, Dark Moon, I think, was 2013. Because mm -hmm. that was seen at the first real E3 for 3DS, right? Where they had that picture yes. on screen with Luigi's Mansion and Kid Icarus and uh, Mario Kart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're probably not going to call this Luigi's Mansion 3. They'll probably call it Luigi's Mansion um, Darker Moon or something. Well, they already <laughs> didn't they already say it's called 3? It, it's a working title, at least in the trailer. Re oh. So it's, it's probably going to be Luigi's Mansion 3 and then something. 
on the name. Maybe. I mean, because Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is not called Luigi's Mansion 2, so it'd be no, weird yeah. to just start numbering well, things. It out is of in some territories, though. Some territories, it is called Luigi's Mansion 2. Okay. They yeah. should have stuck with 2. I, just I like agree. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know why they went with Dark Moon. That, it's weird. They should have just weird. called it 2. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but hey, uh, there's a new IP coming next year in the form of Town from our guys at Game Freak. Yeah. My God. Um,. A lot to say about it. I, I know the some people have complained that in, when it was announced at the Nintendo Direct that it kind of ran weird, and I'm like, well, yeah, the game's in development. So. Oh, sure. <laughs> That's also a very early look at the game. I think we're not going to get that until, like, late fall next year. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, uh, Pokemon uh, probably will be out in November, So but, because Pokemon games pretty much <laughs> since the 3DS come out on in November. But um, I think this game could maybe be... September, the September game, maybe? Yeah, maybe. I can see that. I could see it too. I could also see it getting delayed, but you know, let's it's never wish for that. <laughs> as, as we saw before, but um, I don't want to. I don't want to say any game is possibly getting delayed, but because it's already a packed year to begin with. Yeah, I was gonna say if something gets delayed next year, like okay, who cares? There's like lots of stuff coming out. So for me, <laughs> exactly. if you're gonna delay a game out of a year, I think 2019 is the best year to delay it in. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not Pokemon Switch core RPG. No, that's not going to happen. That's exactly. <laughs> that's sales numbers. There's that's that's something they're I think really relying on for next holiday season. So I really something don't think that's really delayed. bad would have yeah, something really bad would have to happen in development for them to delay it. But no, they're not. Oh yeah. Gonna. It's it's pretty much like the smash of 2019. Totally. It is. Totally. Most definitely. This is going to be their big tw I think we can all agree that this is kind of going to be the the most important game for the Switch in 2019. Oh yeah. I mean even if you look at this year too with the sales numbers for Let's Go, uh, they ended mm. up doing way better than they expected for that game. And I don't really know why they didn't expect that game to sell as much as it did, but <laughs> obviously, I mean, they're bringing in a lot of that, that mainstream audience that we were talking about earlier that maybe hasn't played a Pokemon game in a really long time that's being reintroduced to the franchise through Let's Go. Um, so it really would not surprise me for this to be their giant game they're betting everything on during the holiday mm -hmm. season. I, again, it's a new generation. It's the first time a new generation has debuted on a console. It's never happened before. So exactly. it's revolutionary. It's going to be a Pokemon revolution. Like, one thing I'm really thinking about is how many Switches could be sold next year. And I think we could be talking about the 50, 60 million range of uh, soul systems by the end of next year. With Animal Crossing and Pokemon, definitely. <laughs> and, and the continued legs of Smash Brothers and all the games that have already come out, yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. That they did, and you couldn't find one for like the first three years on yeah. the market. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. the case for Switch. They're just good. But do you think yeah. Nintendo will have any games that could contend for Game of the Year next year? Hmm. I mean, it also depends on what other companies, what other games are being released that year, too. I mean, man, if I would love to see Pokemon be as ambitious for it to be nominated Game of the Year, but I don't know if that's happened in Pokemon franchise, has it? I don't think that we've ever gotten GOTY. It just has one like mobile game. I mean, uh, handheld game. I mean, it's yeah. one. It's one game of the year in Famitsu a bunch of times, right? Didn't it win for Black and White? I'm pretty sure it did. It probably did. Yeah. I'm Perhaps guessing. it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about the Game Awards, obviously. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, to me, it's. I mean, of course. Those are always going to skew for games that were developed in America. So I think like that. I don't really expect it. Nor do I really care to be honest. I feel like I, Smash Brothers to me is the game of the year, and that's something that. You know, obviously didn't get nominated this year because of their weird uh, idea of like, oh, these are the games that should be, uh, you know, nominated for this year's awards. And I think it's yeah, just going to be forgotten about next year, too. Yeah. I don't think they're going to remember Smash Bros. for Game of the Year next year, which is unfortunate. No, no, but, no, no definitely not. Yeah. It is unfortunate, but um, we'll see come next year. Um, things could surprise us, and we'll see um, Luigi's Mansion 3 nominated. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt, I doubt oh, Luigi's yeah. Mansion 3 would I be the game, it. though. Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. Since we are on the topic of uh, Pokemon uh, Switch and Game of the Year, how ambitious do you think this game will be in terms of um, uh, uh, new mechanics, uh, uh, breaking conventions, and trying to show that this is a true console experience? Because uh, they didn't they say that uh, they wanted Pokemon Let's Go to be a handheld experience, or was it the other way around? They wanted Pokemon Let's Go to kind of be a warm-up kind for next experience, year. Experience, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not necessarily a handheld experience, but the experience to get people into it. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. my first Pokemon game, kind of. 
Yeah, I mm -hmm. see. And if, to be honest, that game is better played in handheld mode because trying to throw the Pokeball like on the screen. I, I on actually the TV. like it in handheld mode. I've seen people complaining about the controls in handheld mode, but I actually like it. It's, oh, it's a lot it's, of fun. Yeah. <laughs> my, if, to be honest, my girlfriend plays more Pokemon Let's Go than I do, and she's not even a gamer. It's kind of weird, but um, <laughs> she, but she plays in handheld mode, even though the TV is available for her because it's just easier to aim in uh, handheld mode than it is in TV mode. But I hope the core RPG Pokemon Switch title, God, that's a mouthful, um, <laughs> will will be able will be ambitious. Not like I don't think it's going to be Breath of the Wild ambitious, but it'll be ambitious like in respects to its own franchise. Yeah, I'm going like, to I'm going to have a hot take here and say it's going to be just as ambitious as it needs to be. I think that's mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what it's going to be. Uh, I mean, I'm not expecting not a, wrong. <laughs> I know. I'm ex I'm not expecting like a revolutionary change. And to be honest, Sun and Moon was refreshing with the kahunas and stuff, but like just bring back gyms. Just bring back gyms but make it a new feeling experience. Maybe change up the starters. Mm -hmm. Maybe don't make the starters fire, water, and grass. Make it dark psychic and fighting or something. Just do something different. Like, I would say that Pokemon Let's Go is pretty much the link between worlds and Wind Waker HD uh, for of uh, the Pokemon franchise. Like, That's make, a fair. Preparing, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that the main question that people are wondering is if you will get uh, dual analog camera control. Uh, and uh, based on the Pokeball Plus, I'm not so sure any longer about that. Hmm. I don't yeah, know either. I, really, I don't know. It's kind of something we just have to wait and find out. Because <laughs> um, I hope, well, I do hope at the same time, like even dual analog control I don't know much about, but I... But playing with one hand was cool for Let's Go. I don't know if playing with one hand would fly as well for the Gen 8 Pokemon game. And I think Let's Go were so successful that I I feel like they're going to continue that as a sub-franchise. I really do. I think Me we're going to get Let's Go Pikachu Togepi. I think we're going to get, like, Let's Go Riolu and whatever the Shino one is. I, don't think, I think they're probably going to skip uh, Oris. I think they're going to skip, like, the Ruby Sapphire generation. But I do think we're going to get Johto and Sinnoh. And considering there's pictures... In, uh, in Sylph Company of areas in Johto and in Sinnoh, I think that's kind of like a little bit of a tease to be like, hey, probably going to get these two games. Yeah. Uh, go on. I was just going to say, I thought of something else that might be next year or we might get a teaser of next year that we didn't talk about at all. Which uh, is... Monolith Soft's new game that they've oh, already talked about yeah. and they've shown off. Yeah. Oh, that good looking game with all that amazing concept art. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Give it's it to kinda me. kind of nice. I would like it. <laughs> the more traditional RPG, yeah. And uh, But I still have a feeling that might be a 2020 game, but mm. yeah, because uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came out, they worked on the expansion pass for that, and that was a lot of work. Yeah, so it was. It was. I have a feeling that it, that is a 2020 game, and uh, when we look at the lineup for 2019, I just don't see it in the room for a, for a game of that size. Mm -hmm. And that's also why I think Metroid Prime 4 is a 2020 game. Like, keep that game as far away from Pokemon and Halo as possible. Though I don't know when Halo's coming out, so <laughs> there's that. Unless they want to go for that Game of the Year title and they want to have something that really competes. Mm -hmm. We shall see. You know, the sooner the Metroid Prime 4 comes out, the better. But I also do want Metroid... I want Metroid Prime 4 to sell well so we see more Metroid games... So I'm also trying to think about what's best for them, you know, like a good mother should. But uh, mm -hmm. Metroid Prime Trilogy, that's something we didn't really talk about either. Like, I feel like that should be a shoe in for 2019 also. Yeah. So I, I think 20, summing up 2019 um, will be the most successful year in the Nintendo Switch history uh, thus far. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because we, oh, we already know about so many games, we're getting even more games and announcements. Uh, I, I might think that we would not be getting that many more games this year, because we already have such a solid lineup of both first party, third party and indie games coming to the system. But I think we could see a lot of 2020 uh, reveals. And yeah. also uh, game trailers through the Nintendo Direct, through E3, but uh, also through other surprise um, announcements. And um, yeah, I, I think that uh, Nintendo has planned this out perfectly uh, based on uh, the current lineup of games, both in the spring and, and the later half of the year. It looks like they will have system seller after system seller after the system seller. And I'm very happy that Nintendo is making that bold, big move with moving all the handheld franchises 
over permanently now to the Nintendo <laughs> Switch because exactly. that is making the Nintendo Switch the only system that matters from Nintendo at this point. For sure. Mm-hmm. Of course. But yeah, I'm excited for the new Pokemon game. It's going to be fun. We're all excited. It's going to be great. Yes, uh, but what? I think we have one more thing to talk about, don't we, Conrad? Nintendo Switch Online. (laughs) (laughs) That thing. Um, Yeah, it's not perfect. All right, I think today we had a very good discussion, but you know, we're splitting this up into three parts, so... So this has uh, been a really great discussion. Thank you, Roger, for joining us. Anytime. As always. Anytime. Yes. So tell us, where can we find you on the interwebs? You can find me at Roger's Base on YouTube, on Twitter, on Twitch, and on Instagram. I'm about to hit 200K. Very excited. I can't Ooh. wait. And uh, so I should be having a pretty exciting first half of 2019. I got a lot of coverage planned for Three Houses. Uh, I have a lot of continued Smash coverage. My big epic Smash Battle of History series is coming back in January with three new episodes. And there's going to be three episodes every month afterwards for the next three months because I have nine of them recorded already. So uh, there's a lot of Smash content coming. And if you like Nintendo and you like anime and manga, definitely subscribe to Roger's Face. Very cool. Well, man, oh man, we're going to have many more discussions in the future. It's going to be a lot of fun, maybe in a mid-year discussion. 2019 is going to be great. It'll be great. I hope you guys... uh, also, subscribe to us if you haven't already through the Commonwealth Realm. And if you enjoyed this discussion, be sure to hit that like button. And we're going to have many more videos coming in 2019 about Zelda. And because um, we have our After Breath of the Wild series, it's all great well, stuff. So, so yes. this, is, this is pretty much the last video of the year. I also want to inform that 2018 may not have been that exciting on the channel, but in 2019, we'll be getting back to top form again. And uh, it comes both to quality uh, productions uh, it, it goes for Zelda content it goes for bringing back Pokemon Switch for full, that was a little bit amputated after the reveal of Pokemon Let's Go instead of Pokemon Switch and uh, of course uh, all the new series that you will be see coming uh, from beginning from January, February we're also planning to celebrate the 33rd anniversary of uh, the Legend of Zelda franchise and uh, also have a lot of uh, other surprises uh, plus more live action stuff because you need to see us on the screen it's just been so much going on this fall and everything beyond that i hope you all had a great christmas and i wish you a very happy new year all right guys thank you so much for watching we'll see you guys in the next one bye everybody